So let's think through the scenario that we, I feel like, have seen quite a bit in the last three years. So a lot of people were thrown into using Teams because of the pandemic and because of remote work really yep. coming on the scene. And people not only did not have any type of standardized training, but other people figured out how to use things at different rates within a company. And so now there's no consistency across which teams use what. Mm -hmm. What is the advice to those companies who have kind of had a shoot from the hip, you know, strategy the last three years, and now they're realizing, well, we're pretty much going to stay remote, hybrid, whatever. We're using this tool. Everyone has varying, you know, uses levels, for it, yeah. levels. Every team is set up differently. Division, I mean, within the company is set up differently. How do we start creating more of a standardized practice when people are all over the place? Yeah, so my recommendation is always to start to categorize the features and how you want to use it. So there's big ticket items that can be like, we treat guest access this way. We mm -hmm. treat apps this way, right? Come up with those rules, right? Okay. Which may impact some people that are currently using it. Maybe it was completely open and they're like, we've got guest users all over the place, right? Because yeah. that's what they did. You may have to go back and say, no, we don't. Have that. some hard conversations. We need, to, sure. we need to change that. Once you have that kind of in place and you understand what that is, then you can start to say, okay, cool. Uh, 90% of my business, like, for example, our, our uh, internal communication uh, webinar, right, where we talk about topic-based communication, right? Then you say, hey, we want to engage in topic-based communication. That is an important aspect of what we do. We need to change that as our at an, in, in organization. Cool. Let's start talking about that and training on that, which is a broader topic about mm -hmm. This is how group chats should work. This is how individual chats yeah. should work. And this that's, is what that's not even necessarily teams work. training, right? That's how to apply topic-based communication within teams. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so now you say, okay, cool. That's the next thing I'm going to do. And you basically start to address the business needs that sure. this technology can, can uh, help you solve. And less, everybody needs to know how to use the technology so that they can figure out how to use it best in their daily life, right? Right. Um, that is secondary to, as a business, this is how we're using teams at, in the business. That's the difference between using the tool strategically versus not. Correct. And, right? and I, I really want to be clear, that doesn't mean that I'm like, I, I, we are not suggesting, I am not suggesting that you should lock down and tell users, this is the only way you can do it, period, right? Uh, but what the reason people get frustrated with the use of teams, especially in an organization like you were talking where uh, maybe the owners, uh, or I, I can't remember which one mm -hmm. you said it, but like one person knows how to use it really well or a mm -hmm. small group of people, mm -hmm. but everybody else doesn't know how to use it and they're frustrated that everybody else just needs to get trained. The reality is if they all get trained, that only solves a very small piece of it because however they've decided works for them and for their piece of the organization isn't necessarily gonna immediately translate you know, somebody who takes that training isn't going to automatically go, oh, I see how yeah. this thing fits in my life and it fits the same way that it fits yours. And so we're going to use it. People are going to look at it and go, for example, the communication one is a perfect example. They're going to go, I, I understand this. It's just like group chats, group text messages. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Now you have somebody who's like, no, 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 I want it channels. Mm -hmm. And they refuse to switch to channels because they didn't get how that fits or the benefits because the training only went so far and their right. gap this for it's, it's just, they didn't get that far. Actually, Michaela brought up a great point. Another one of our coworkers um, on a recent discussion over podcast about topic based messaging, technically done right, but culturally done wrong. So mm -hmm. they had a thread where people could post uh, information about what's going on in the office, but then also personal information, mm -hmm. like if they're going to have a soccer practice and yep. have to leave early or whatever. And it ended up getting so muddied that there was no structure around what was supposed to be in the thread or what wasn't. And the whole thread ended up falling apart to which people started emailing again. Yep. And it was one of those mm. just complete misses as far as, you know, moving to a topic based channel, technically using the technology correctly. Everyone's using teams, but it wasn't structured properly. And not everyone was on the same page about the structure. Yeah. And to, to the point that it actually shot themselves in the foot and people started putting important information, not in that channel yep. and somewhere else like email. So uh, this is your exact point is, uh, is what we, one of the things we try to do. So like, I'll try to explain what we do as an example to other organizations. Uh, Emma, when you got onboarded, there was a scheduled meeting that was, I think, in the first day or two that was about Slack. 
Now we use Slack internally for our communications, uh, mm-hmm. which there's a whole nother podcast about why we do that still. And like there's blog articles about it. Read it. Uh, if, if you're interested, I'm team um, Slack. but <laughs> like we Slack. use, we use teams and Slack, but yes. for our internal stuff, we use Slack. There was a whole meeting and training session with, I think it was probably Mitch about that use of that tool. Mm-hmm. Now, did we, did he go through how to open Slack? Not really, probably. Yeah. Um, it was more focused on these are the channels that you should be watching. This is what they're for. This, this is, is how our to communicate approach. In them. Yeah. This is our approach to communicating in these channels mm-hmm. across the board. Right. Um, and it wasn't necessarily obvious immediately. Like it wasn't like a no brainer because I know as people join our organization, it takes a little bit time, time to get accustomed to the way that we communicate. Cause it's mm-hmm. very, you know, we've had this conversation even recently about like we communicate in channels. Like we do not want to see a ton of direct messages back and forth. We believe strongly that unless there's a real reason to make it a private message, there's no reason not to put it in a public channel. If somebody doesn't want to be watching that channel, they don't have to watch that channel. If somebody who doesn't want to, you know, wants to ignore it and, and, and it's a threat, they can the ignore it. Right? They like, can turn it off. They yeah. can choose to do what they want to do. So but, uh, yeah, I think the point you're driving towards is really that teams training without the structured strategy alongside is really pointless. And so if someone's going to ask us to come in and just train on how to use Teams, it's not going to get them very far. 